Welcome back. Um, we have an amazing afternoon, so I'm really glad you are here. And um, one of the great pleasures in assuming this position is to um, build on the longstanding relationship that we have with the New Jersey Historical Commission. Uh, when I first came to New York in 75, I quickly got to know a number of people in the New Jersey Historical Commission. Um, I got to meet uh, Mr. Giles, Dr. Giles at that time. Uh, I first met Clem, but also a number of other people who worked there, and they have always done amazing work despite the uh, horrendous cutbacks that began under uh, Reagan. Um, they have really kept going um, uh, in ways that have constantly been documenting and paying emphasis on the stories, especially of those who had traditionally not been included in the history of the state. So that work is continuing. I really deeply appreciate it. And part of the um, annual event that, that the Price Institute is involved in is really the award of the Giles R. Wright Award. And, um, <clears throat> excuse me, and Gesundheit. Um, so, um, and this is, as you can imagine, a uh, grant uh, that's uh, given by the New, Jer New Jersey Historical Commission to the outs uh, an, outs an outstanding, excuse me, <clears throat> an outstanding project that addresses a topic in the field of African American history and designates uh, it as uh, under the name of, of Giles Wright, who used to work there, but also was, of course, so integral to organizing the MTW as well. Uh, so, um, uh, this year, to present this year's award, um, please welcome back uh, Dr. Larry Green, who, as you remember, is a professor at Seton Hall University and also a member, and oftentimes he's been a chair as well, of the New Jersey Historical Commission. So, uh, Larry Green, and if you could just um, welcome him, and then he's going to be uh, making the award. Larry Green. Good afternoon. We had a wonderful morning session, beautiful music and singing, and, and excellent presentations. So it was indeed a great, great morning. Uh, I'd like to present the Giles Wright Award, named after Giles Wright, who was the director of the African American History Program within the New Jersey Historical Commission. Um, our award winner for this year is for the exhibit, Radical Women Fighting for Power and the Right to Vote. This is an exhibit at the Newark Public Library uh, on the third floor. Please take the opportunity to visit that excellent, excellent exhibit. As you know, this is the uh, 100th uh, year anniversary of the 19th Amendment. And it's very, very important to understand that the fight for women's suffrage and the 19th Amendment was indeed a multicultural affair, a multi-ethnic and multiracial affair. And when you see that exhibit, you will see African-American suffragettes who were involved in this struggle for women's rights. And so I think it's most appropriate in 2020 that this award goes to the Newark uh, Public Library and for the exhibit, Radical Women Fighting for Power and the Right to Vote. Um, I've been working at the Newark Public Library on microfilm and I can attest to you that the Newark Public Library and the New Jersey Information Center there is a wonderful, wonderful historical resource. And it gives me great pleasure to present this award to our recipients today. Noelle Lorraine Williams, the exhibit cur um, curator and researcher. <laughs> Beth Zach Cohen, research assistant. And George Robb, research assistant and professor at William Patterson, couldn't be with us today, but he's been an integral part of, of the, uh, the research staff. So I'd like to have our recipients uh, make some remarks and 
briefly explain to you what this exhibit is about. Good afternoon. I have to attest, I see him often at the microfilm machine. <laughs> He's a warrior. On behalf of the Newark Public Library, which works to serve the communities of Newark, as well as the communities of New Jersey, and many people throughout the country, I would like to say thank you to Rutgers University <laughs> um, Rutgers University and, Cle and the Clement Price Institute for convening this event. It's amazing. Um, I remember coming here and Dr. Price convening and making it a very warm environment um, so that we understand that the process of learning is something that all communities engage in. Um, one does not need to have a degree or be a part of an institution to have a desire to learn. Um, and of course, in African American culture where we've been learning about people who were digging holes in the ground to teach each other how to read, to other people who were secretly learning how to read in the dark of night, um, we know this. So. so much respect to our ancestors, Dr. Clement Price and Dr. Marion Thompson, as well as Giles Wright. So many thanks to the New Jersey Historical Commission. They, we received two grants for this, um, the research for this exhibition. And it just shows or it demonstrates the understanding of what it takes to really bring diverse histories into the public eye. It's so easy, time and time again, for us to say, well, we couldn't find the immigrant women who were a part of this story. We couldn't find more about the working class women because they didn't leave documents in the archive. We couldn't learn more about the African American women because they didn't leave diaries in historical societies. But with the New Jersey Historical Commission support, we were able to do the tracing and the scouring of the archive for almost 14 months to produce this exhibition. Um, so thank you. Uh, thank you to Marion Kelly, um, Dr. Ingrid Bentecourt, um, the officers at the Newark Public Library. Thank you again to Dr. George Robb, who was our supervising scholar on this project, and to my colleague, Beth Zach Cohen from the New Jersey Information Room. Many of you know Beth in person. <laughs> Some of you all have seen her at the New Jersey Room. She is, she doesn't want to say anything today, and I'll respect that. She is an instrumental person in assisting all kinds of people with all kinds of questions. From where do I buy covers for my shoes in the rain? <laughs> to, can you tell me how many people were at this conference in 1918? <laughs> and they didn't publish a booklet. <laughs> That's commitment and she does it with diligence and patience and democracy. Because even before I became a scholar, and I just emailed her out of the blue, she was as good then, she's good all the time with everyone, and that is what public service is about. Yeah. I'm going to wrap up. I would like to again say thank you to Dr. Betty Livingston Adams. Even though we didn't work with her, her work on black women, um, Christian organizers, and Summit was instrumental to pushing us along on the work that we needed to do. To the Vineland Historical Society, which provided documents with ease when other institutions told us we're doing our centennial exhibition too. <laughs> Sorry, we're not loaning you anything, which is what we heard from seven institutions. Um, and the Alice Paul Institute. 
Um, thank you to Secretary of State Tisha Wei, First Lady Tammy Murphy for spearheading this initiative, the New Jersey Women Vote, which is actually a statewide partnership of 70 New Jersey organizations. Um, finally, I would like to invite you to the exhibition. It's open, as Larry said, on the third floor of the library. We'll be hosting a panel. Please put it in your calendars on March 11th. Even if you don't put it in your calendar, you can visit the Newark Public Library website or our Instagram page, Radical Women New Jersey Vote. Um, on March 11th, we'll be discussing the battle for women's su suffrage under the auspices of the New Jersey Historical Society with funding from the Africana Institute. Uh, the Newark History Society, um, under, and also Rutgers. Um, so please join us for that. We also have some other programming for youth that will be on the website as well. Um, I just, again, want to stress, it was so important. And I remember our initial meetings with, um, with George and Beth, and we discussed that African-American suffragists, um, many folks like Blanche Harris, who's never been written about in the context of suffrage, and Beth helped find information on that, as well as immigrant women and working class women. It just, we're both so proud as researchers, New Jersey women, to bring the stories and the framework of the exhibition starts from a working class women's framework, because it's important that we understand that working class women and the working poor women help to shape and create these communities. And we, as, we're, as liberal activists, we can't rely on the same narrative of middle class women always leading. We have people like Blanche Harris in Newark, New Jersey, who had a rooming house, who actually led the colored women's women's political union here in Newark. We have other women like Florence Spearing Randolph who moved here, who some of you might know. We have immigrant women like Melinda mm -hmm. Scott and... She had a, a hat at Trimmer's Union in Newark. She was head of the union and she was also a suffragette. Yes. And these are the working class women most exhibitions have not spoken of and we are so proud to include them. So please visit the Newark Public Library's website and visit our Instagram page. Um, so in closing, I will just simply quote something that Alice, a lot of you know Alice Dunbar Nelson. And she was writing about Violet Johnson, who was one of the activists that we profile in the exhibition, who moved from the South to New York, and then eventually moved to Summit as a domestic worker. And as a domestic worker, she helped co-found a church. And then after co-found a church, she helped find a home. Found, she helped to create a home for immigrant and migrant women from the South as a domestic worker, as someone who wasn't even from here. And Alice Dunbar Nelson, in one article, she sings her praises. And I'll just leave you with a comment or something that Nelson said that Violet Johnson would say everywhere. She would say, quote, talk, tell them all about it. Let the word go forth. They need to be told about our work and what we have done. Violet Johnson. Thank you. I have to present you with you. Okay. Which way do you want to do this?